So for HCC, of course, first we need an indication, right? Uh, and I do think, well, the NCCN guidelines, we do have the, the checkpoint inhibitors based on soft data. HCC, the data is probably as good as a colon colorectal data, but not enough of it, I think, and we're still waiting for the dust to settle. Uh, once the studies are, are done, and I, I'm, I'd be stunned if they're not positive in favor of the checkpoint inhibitors, it, it, to me they're first line, they're front line drugs. I mean, they are amazingly effective. Not in the hypermutated patients, like we, as we see in colorectal cancer, but probably the inflammatory disease-related patients, which is, the, a gen, which is the genesis of HCC. Uh, it, but right now, it's still an experimental, in this experimental realm. Studies are ongoing. Again, I, I'd have to say that what's unique is not that everybody responds, because by no means does every patient respond. But HCC, we are seeing responses that knock your socks off. Uh, and even if they're rare, when you see these, these patients rising from the ashes with a treatment, it's really profound. And we see that. So scoring a treatment that may not have a huge response rate, but those patients who respond may get phenomenal benefit. It's hard to, hard to figure out how to exactly to place that in the continuum of care, but, but it will move up front and center, given a disease where there really are not very effective therapies otherwise. Now, where are we going with that? We're, for example, doing a study combining a checkpoint inhibitor with serafinib. Uh, you know, will there be synergy? Don't know. So those are the kinds of questions we'll ask. Do we combine a checkpoint inhibitor with ipilimumab, for example? Well, we're getting into pretty costly combinations, but obviously those are questions that are being asked because if, if, if these drugs work in that disease, perhaps we can make them even more effective by, by ramping them up.